All right, back for another video. We're in the uh, 2007 Silverado Classic today. I've had a whine in this vehicle for quite some time. I, I think it started when I replaced the alternator. I put in a uh, one that's a little higher amps than stock. I think stock on this is 145, and I got a 160 amp. And I think that's when the problem started, but I've got this whine that changes, you know, it ramps up with the, uh, with the RPM of the engine. I'm going to see if I can get it on video here for you guys, and then we're going to try and figure out what it is and hopefully fix it. So let's start this up and see if I can get this noise on camera here. It's really quiet because the engine's already warm. So that's inside the cab. All right, let's see if I can get a clip of this inside the engine bay here. Okay, so as you can hear there, it kind of sounds like it's coming either from the alternator that I talked about earlier. Um, it could be that those bearings just whine ever since I've had it. Or it could also be the either pulley here. I actually took and listened to it with this stethoscope I got from Harbor Freight while I had somebody revving the engine. And with uh, that little metal tip on there, I put it, you know, here on the alternator and listened to it, and it made a very, very similar sound. Um, I was I was definitely hearing that kind of whirring, whining sound coming from the alternator. But I also checked down here on the bolt for that idler pulley and was getting the same thing. So I guess it is possible that I've got two components making the same noise. But uh, this alternator I got from O'Reilly, like I said, it's 160 amp. I got the limited lifetime warranty on it. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is take this off, swap it out, and then um, I'll also pick up a new idler pulley while I'm there, change both those out, and hopefully we can get this wine quieted down. So to begin this process, I'm just gonna remove the negative cable on the battery. I already did that here. Used a, uh, what is it, an eight millimeter socket. Probably gonna go ahead and take off the positive too, because while I'm looking at it here, I see a little bit of corrosion on those cables. So you know what, I'm just gonna clean those up while I'm at it. But that's gonna be the first step here, just getting a, you could stop it just removing the negative, that way you don't have power running through this and we can move on to doing that. But I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna clean up both of these real quick and then we'll move along. So I took my wire brush and just cleaned up these terminals a little bit, got them all cleaned up. I actually took them out, you know, polished everything off, actually polished up the wire ends there, the loops, and uh, they're looking pretty good. Also trying my best to get down in there and get the uh, actual posts on the battery clean as well. So now it's gonna be time to take the belt off so we can get to some of this other stuff. For removing Once you pull that off of there, you can go ahead and just give your belt an inspection. I didn't change this one that long ago and it looks okay. You're looking for any kind of, when you bend it over on the ribbed side, you know, you're looking for cracking. You're looking for any kind of unnecessary wear on the smooth side, stuff like that. This one looks all right, so I'm probably just gonna put it back on. Like I said, I probably changed it not too long ago. So that one's good. But now that we've got that belt off, we have access to the idler pulley and the alternator pulley. You can give them a spin, and if they're uh, kind of messed up, sometimes you can feel. If they spin like super freely and just keep spinning for like forever, that's never a good sign. If they don't spin freely at all, that's also a bad sign. 
you went somewhere in the middle. When I spin this one, I do actually hear a little bit of a noise, which could be part of my issue. A lot of that wine may be coming from that. This one feels okay. It's a little worn out. You also want to check for any kind of wobble and play back and forth while you got these off too. They're not moving any, um, but both of them were screeching pretty good when I listened with the stethoscope. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and try and get the warranty for this alternator. And you can get like a Gates pulley, either pulley at O'Reilly for another like $30. If you step it to the Delco, it actually doubles in price to 60. So you kind of got to pick your poison there. Do you want to, you know, the Delco part, which is what GM trucks like, or do you want to save a little bit of money? I might get a Gates just while I'm over there. But let's uh, let's take these off and continue along. For removing this idler pulley right here, it's your same 15 millimeter you used on the tensioner. I've already loosened it up. And you're just going to unwind it and pull it off of there. Just like that. There you go. It seems okay, but it's a little worn. I'm in here. I might as well change it. It's not hard. It's one bolt. Now I just gotta get the alternator off. For your alternator, you got the same 15 millimeter bolts up front. There's one here, one there. You've also got your plug right back here. And then there's another wire, your negative, or your positive, I mean, that runs into the back there, it seems to be a 10 millimeter socket. So we gotta take all that off and then that part should come out of there. Let me show you guys just real quick what I mean on the back. You got a plug here, just a simple, undo this little clip, pull back on it. There you go, undo your little pigtail. Then we'll have to get the 10 millimeter after this big power wire here. Again, make sure you've got all your, your battery and everything disconnected before you do this. I'm gonna take this off. I'm actually, while I got my wire brush here too, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a big, a big brushing so it'll be ready for the new one. Just give it a good cleaning real quick. A little hard to do at this angle with the camera and whatnot. I really should have done this when I put this alternator on back in 2017, it started whining, like I said at the beginning of the video, way back when I first got it. But I thought, surely, no, it's brand new. Surely there's no problems with it. And I didn't want to, <laughs> it was, you know, it was hot, kind of like it is now. And I just didn't want to mess with it anymore. So I put up with the wine. Now I'm sick of the wine. Let's see if we can fix it. I recommend doing this when you've not been driving around all afternoon. This uh, radiator hose right under my arm is pretty warm. So do this on a cool car or truck if you can. Save your skin a little bit. All right, there's one out. And there's number two. Now we should be able to lift this off here if I remember correctly. And honestly, it might be a little seized between those uh, mounting brackets. So I'm gonna have to get a pry bar real quick. Okay, let's try a crowbar. See if we can get that started. There we go. That's what you need. See it coming out of there. All right, that should have it loosened out. Ought to be good to go. It's a little warm. I hope I can pull this out of here. I probably should get a glove. Let's be safe about this, huh? There we go. All right. All right, and there we go. It is out of there. Hopefully we can get a warranty replacement for it. It's definitely clicking a little bit. Just spinning it by hand. It spins pretty freely, but it sure is making some racket. So, you know, we got the lifetime warranty. Why not swap it, huh? Now it'll be time to go to O'Reilly and get some parts. Just gave this another look.
Okay, back from the parts store, there's the old idler pulley. We've got a new drive line pulley. This is a uh, this is a Gates. Looks a lot better. Wiggles a little bit more than the old one, which is interesting. But I guess that's how it's supposed to be. We'll see when we put it on there. And then we have the new warranted uh, alternator here. You know, made in China. It's the same. It's a I think it's an Ultima 160 amp for a, a warranty replacement. There, they just swapped it out since I had the limited lifetime at O'Reilly's. So let's put these on there, and hopefully this wine will go away. We'll start with the alternator since that'll be a little bit harder. Let's just take this new one, slide it in gently here in these brackets. Might have to finagle it a little bit to get it in there. Okay, slight change of plans. I'm gonna get a hammer, see if I can press those this way just a little bit. I can't quite get that one in there. There we go, now it's going. Sort it. Okay, after a little bit more hammering to get these little clips that are in here pushed back enough, I think we've got it where I need it in there. Yeah, both the bolts are lining up now. All right, so for tightening these bolts right here along the front, so y'all can see, I'll just show you. Both of these bolts need to go to 37 foot-pounds. So I've got my torque wrench out. We're gonna get them in there close and then I'll use that to tighten it to spec. Okay, now those are semi-tight. Let's tighten them down to spec. Got my torque wrench here set to 37 foot-pounds. There you go. There's the click. There's the click. All right. And when we get ready to put the idler pulley on, it's also 37 foot pounds. Okay, let's get that new idler pulley on there. Here it is, the new gates. We'll just get it started. It's screwing most of the way in here, just by hand. There we go. We'll tighten her down to 37. All right, same thing here. There's the click, all right. Okay, we also can't forget to plug our wires back in on the back here. As I see some more wire loom chip away, I've really gotta get some more loom, put around all these bundles of wires. The heat and the rodents have just wreaked havoc on it. So we've got that one, and then we've got to find our, where did our ring go? Here it is. We get that one on there. Let's take this off gently without losing the washer. Oh, it's actually attached. That's good. While I'm at it, give me just a sec. I'm going to grab some dielectric grease. We're going to put us a, put us a little blob of dielectric grease on here just to make sure we've got a good connection and to keep it from corroding. Spread some of that around, both sides. We'll also do this on the battery terminals once it's time to do that. Put a little bit on the back of this too. Now let's tighten her down. If you guys remember, this was the 10 millimeter we used earlier. We'll sort of get that in place. I'm gonna get the socket. Just make this nice and hand tight. be good there. We're kind of starting to twist the wire a little bit. Move our boot back up over it. And there we go. We've got our wires plugged back in. Just make sure you don't over tighten that where you're stretching this too much. I may have actually done it a little bit too much. That's a little pulled tight, but I think it'll be all right. There's still a little bit of slack. 
All right, now we just gotta put the belt back on. We should be good to go. Put the battery back on after that. And we'll see if we get rid of the noise. I didn't get a recording of putting the belt back on because I actually had to pull up the belt diagram to remember real quick, but it's always good to do. Double check, you know, where you're routing this thing. Um, just look it up online on your phone real quick. Your engine size, your year, model number, all that. We got everything routed on there. Got it around the new either pulley. Got the new alternator plugged in there. We've got our connections tight back here. We got our pigtail back in. All that's left is to reconnect the battery and we'll see how she sounds. All right, let's reconnect this. Same story as the back of the alternator. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease on these threads. Right back here, it doesn't really show on the camera, but my hands are probably gonna way through most of this. I'm just gonna grease it up a little bit. Make sure we get a good connection and make sure nothing corrodes. All right, got that greased up. Let's go ahead and put it on. Little eight millimeter wrench here, tighten it up. All right, good strong connection there. Put our cap back on. Now for the negatives. Same story, a little grease. I'm gonna put a little bit on the terminal itself. Now that we're connected to the battery again, of course, be careful. Make sure you don't touch anything and make that circuit connect. You'll get a little zap. All right, we got a little grease on there again. We'll plug this one in. Nice and tight. Good deal. Well, here's the moment of truth. Now that everything's hooked back up, let's start it up and hope it doesn't whine. Wait for the key beeps. Turn all the accessories off so we can hear. And here we go. It is still whining like crazy. <laughs> Darn it. Just as bad as it was before, so we didn't find it. Next guess is probably gonna be power steering pump, maybe. So after a test drive, that initial reaction was I still definitely heard a sort of whining, whistling sound when I started it. Upon test driving it, I just got back from a test drive and it seems like it's much quieter on acceleration than it was. It's just not all completely gone. So there may be something else in there that's that's worn, but I definitely think I've helped things. I mean, things haven't gotten worse getting a new alternator and an either pulley. So, I mean, things like that better. You just don't want to get in a situation where you're throwing parts at something to try and figure something out. That's never a good way to be. But um, I don't know, next guess, like I said, might be the, uh, the power steering pump. Might be able to flush it and put in some new GM fluid and maybe that'll help some things out. Um, or, you know, it could be one of the other various things. I kind of had to listen with the stethoscope to see if I could find something else that sounded weird, but I, I really didn't hear anything crazy near the power steering pump or elsewhere, so. I'll just have to keep an eye on it. Um, this, I don't really wanna label this as a fix. For some of you guys, it definitely probably will fix it if you definitely have a bad alternator bearing or either pulley bearing. But if it's like me and you've got something else in there that may be worn, then uh, you're gonna have to keep looking kind of like I am. So partial fix, at any rate, we went through the process of how to remove the alternator and the either pulley and reinstall new ones of those. So hopefully there's some value here um, and hopefully it helps some of you guys. If you enjoyed this video, then definitely be sure to drop a like on it. Um, comment what your experience with this issue has been, what it was for you, if you were able to figure something out and um, consider subscribing. I'm gonna, you know, as I fix these trucks up, got a GMC Yukon of 2002, this 2007 Silverado Classic and got a couple F-150s as well, so like the other videos, you know, whenever I come across something that needs to be fixed, I'm going to try and make a video on it. So be sure to subscribe, stick around for that if you got similar trucks or are interested in learning more about them. Anyways, guys, that will do it for this one. I will see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.